You'd think a book about a dude who is reincarnated as a werewolf would mean that he was the most incredibly powerful werewolf ever and used that power to conquer the world, but in reality, his biggest power is just knowing how to manipulate human beings and their crappy behavior. Hello everybody and welcome to this light novel review. In this video I'm going to be talking about volume number one of the light novel Der Werewolf, The Annals of Veidt. This one released in English by J Novel Club. It's by Hyogetsu. If you want to pick up your own copy I do have a link to Amazon in the description down below. In Japan this is an ongoing series. There are actually 11 volumes released in Japan as of me recording this video. The most recent came out in January of 2019. The story is primarily told in the first person from the perspective of main character Vite. Now this is a reincarnation type isekai novel. We have Vite who has previously been an average normal blah 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 Japanese person who has well, I guess died and been reincarnated as a werewolf in this other world. And it's worth to know that when we start off the book, Vite is older, but it is made clear that he was born and raised in this world. It's not like he just suddenly came into this world as an adult werewolf. That's worth noting, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. The book opens up with Vite as a vice commander in the third division of the Demon Lord's army. Yes, believe it or not, our main character is actually fighting on the side of the Demon Lord. That really rarely ever happens in the light novels that we've been getting in English. In any case, he has been tasked with conquering this trading city, this human trading city. And Vite immediately, we realize, is pretty intelligent in terms of how he decides to take care of this problem. While most demons are raring to do the whole, let's just run in there and kill everybody and slaughter type of plan, Vite instead has decided to take advantage of what werewolves are capable of doing that most demons can't, and that is that werewolves can appear to be human. And so he uses that, as well as manipulates the whole human aspect where we immediately assume someone who doesn't look human is the enemy that we need to defend against, and through this manipulation of people and demon abilities, he is able to take the town with minimal casualties on the human side and absolutely no casualties on his own. For the majority of the book from that point, it deals with Vite having to figure out how to rule this city and how to balance the needs and demands of both the humans and the werewolves. Now again, this is where we see this one aspect of Vite and the fact that this is an isekai really shine through is the fact that Vite is using the fact that not only has he been born and raised as a demon, but he also has memories of having been born and raised and lived as a human. And so he recognizes what both sides need in order to get along. And so he uses that knowledge in order to create a balance in the city to try and create as much as possible a harmonious rule so that there are no further conflicts and so that the city can actually continue to thrive despite its occupation. As the story continues, we do have Vite being tasked with trying to conquer another city, as well as the fact that he is starting to catch the notice of the Demon Lord, which may or may not be a good thing for Vite's health. Finally, we also get a short story at the end of this volume, which deals with a situation that occurred when Vite was a youngster. I will say that unlike a lot of short stories in first volumes that just seem to be sort of throwaway stories that you're kind of like, well, I didn't really need to read it, you don't need to read this short story, but it certainly has a lot of information in it that gives you insight into why Vite is in the position that he is at the beginning of the book in terms of how the werewolves treat him, in terms of how he has learned magic, because that is one thing that sets Vite apart from other werewolves is that he actually is able to use magic. The Werewolf is a actually really competently written light novel. I found it actually really easy to read and very enjoyable. I thought the pacing was very well done. And I thought a lot of the struggles and conflicts that came up during Vite's occupation of this city were 
actually very well thought out, especially given the more sort of medieval technology level that this particular world is in. It was also interesting to see occupation done from the perspective of the occupier, but not just that, but the fact that the occupier isn't even the same race as the people that they are occupying. So the needs and desires of the demons, of course, are vastly different to the needs and desires of the human beings. So this made this book a little bit more interesting to me because it meant that Veidt was trying to balance out very polar opposite ideas that are going on. In Realist Hero, we saw an aspect of this whole occupation force, but that was still humans occupying humans. Even though human beings may have different wants based on where we're born and so forth, ultimately though, we still have the same needs in terms of our food, in terms of our clothing and so forth. And ultimately we still have some of the same ideas in terms of how to deal with problems. In the case of Dear Werewolf, that's not the way that things go because of course the demons have a very different culture to that of the humans. And so how the demons choose to solve a problem is very, very different from what, how humans might. And so Veidt standing in the middle of all of this and balancing out these two things, I really enjoyed and I thought was quite clever the way that he dealt with a lot of the problems. But at the same time though, not clever in a way that was unrealistic. That was one of the things that I think I liked most about this book was that Veidt as a character is actually a very well-written character and he is not perfect. He is not OP. He does not have a ton of knowledge that makes him somehow superior to this person or that person. A lot of what he decides to do is common sense. And a lot of what he does is just based on knowing how crappy human beings can behave in some situations or how crappy humans can become if they're put into a certain situation. So Veidt never really comes off to me as being this character who is unreachable, who just, you know, pulls out, oh, I read this book and this book and this book and this book and I know this and I'm a student of this. And we actually don't know a lot about Veidt's human life. That's, uh, I'll talk about that in another minute. But, uh, but Veidt's, like I said, it, it really you get the sense that most of the decisions he's coming to are based on having been born and raised as a demon in this world, but also having been born and raised as a human and being able to sort of blend those two things together. I also appreciated the fact that Veidt acknowledges that he actually prefers his life as a werewolf, that his allegiance is to the werewolves primarily, as well as to the demon lord, but mostly to his family, his pack, the werewolves. I, I appreciated that he didn't try to have this remorse that, oh, I'm killing humans, I feel so horrible. No, it was like, I don't want to kill humans just because I know that's going to cause problems, but if I have to, to protect the werewolves, I certainly will without hesitation. I like the fact that there wasn't a mixed allegiance with this character, that he sort of just said, you know what, my allegiance is to these people, but I understand that if I rule these people in a way that keeps them somewhat satisfied and happy, it's gonna actually make things better for all of us. I did like the fact that there wasn't that whole split allegiance or that, you know, the whole human aspect of him made his life as a werewolf odd or uncomfortable or whatever. As I said, primarily Veidt's life as a human is almost non-existent. We're actually told right at the very beginning of the book that Veidt really doesn't remember much of his previous life at all. Something that I admit as I went through part of the book I was kind of angry about because he would often talk about video games he played or food that he ate or lessons that he had in school. And I thought to myself, for a guy who states that he can't remember his previous life, you sure remember a hell of a lot of it. <laughs> but what you kind of, the sense that I get, and there are some passages in the book that make it, you know, seem that this is the case. The idea that you get is that Veidt's life was something he doesn't want to remember. So the only thing that he will pay attention to are lessons that he learned. Things that were knowledge, 
but not his actual person, his, not his actual life situation. That is the point where we realize it seems that Veidt wants to forget that information. And I don't know if that's just the author teasing us and that that information may become relevant later on, or that's just the author being like, who wants to talk about that? I was a boring Japanese salesman and I hated my life, blah, 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 crap. Let's just move on with the cool demons and everything else. I don't know which it is, but uh, like I said, at least when I got to those couple of points in the book where I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's the situation here. It made me a little less sort of like, oh, you're just being a sloppy writer saying you don't want to write about his human life, but you can't stop yourself from calling out video games, manga, and everything else. So, so yeah, that was my sort of take on that. And as I said, it was, uh, it was a little interesting to me because almost every isekai typically will have some information about the protagonist's previous life. So it's kind of interesting that that was almost completely eradicated from this book. And like I said, it does make me curious if in future volumes it may come back. Another area that I kind of liked that Veidt's knowledge of human life and, and human education and stuff like that that came into play was the whole aspect of applying magic. I don't want to get too much into it because you know, I don't like to spoil, especially a first volume, but uh, it is kind of cool to see how Veidt applies his knowledge that he gained through schooling as a human and so forth to being able to use that in order to learn magic. That's the one thing that I will say, like, uh, typically isekai characters are OP in one way or another. That is the one thing that I liked about Veidt was that I never really got the sense that he was especially overpowered, that the fact is, is that as a human being living amongst demons, he seems to have realized that he's actually not that strong and that his search to pick up magic was actually done because he felt it would be a way to not be so weak and not be picked on. And I appreciated that even though he does know magic, the magic he knows makes sense given the fact that he is a very physical-based entity as being a werewolf. Again, I won't get into the specifics, but it just, it made it a lot more harmonious as an idea to me that a werewolf, if they could learn magic, this would be the kind of magic they would learn. Uh, you know, it's not like the kind of like, oh, I shoot lightning from my claws or I rain fireballs down from the sky. Like, I think that would have been way too much. So thankfully the book didn't go there. I don't know if it ever will, but at least it didn't in volume one. There's a lot of secondary characters in the book, and while some of them certainly, I think, are kind of fun and interesting, uh, there's not a lot of attention paid to them because there's a lot of them. Uh, but I can see that this cast that has been built around Vite already in Volume 1 could become far more interesting and engaging as you get into further volumes. Like I said, in Japan, there's 11 volumes of this series, so certainly lots of room for these side characters to be explored. But I did appreciate that we, we learned enough about these characters to make me interested in who they were and where this whole journey might take them as the books progressed. The only other thing that I'll talk about in terms of this being a light novel is that obviously there is a harem starting up around Vite, and uh, as a typical light novel protagonist, he's having none of it because, well, I don't, you know what, like, I'm tempted to say it's because he doesn't clue in, but I, he's not one of those annoying protagonists that doesn't clue in, even though it is so obvious that he's just a complete idiot about it. You actually, I, I got the sense more that because Vite is so driven by what he's doing and so focused on what he's doing, it's more like he doesn't have time for that. Or, you know, his only interest in these people is, you know, what he needs them to do right now. The only person that he expresses any kind of romantic interest in I kind of get the sense that she would be obtainable to him, but that it's his own self-doubt that makes him think that she's not. So, I, I, you know, again, like, it does have harem aspects to it, um, but at this point, at least in the first volume, they're not ridiculous, and, and Veidt's not getting engaged in it did not make me think less of him as a main character as I have had in other particular light novels. So overall, Der Werewolf was actually pretty good. I... I admit, I did not think it would be when I first 
saw when it was announced, I was kind of like, okay, dudes, the werewolf, okay, well, that's a little different. Oh, he's in the Demon Lord's army, okay, well, that's, that's kind of cool, but yeah, I think this, I don't know if this will work. Well, it does work, and it actually worked a lot better than I initially thought. So, this is one that I would definitely be interested in checking out more volumes. Uh, I am actually a little late in reviewing this. I do believe the third volume of this series is coming out very soon, so if you haven't checked this one out, you've at least got a couple volumes that you can binge right away. My next review is an overwhelming request from my patrons, and that is J.K. Haru is a sex worker in another world, aka how my video will be demonetized on YouTube with just a couple of sentences. That'll be my next review. Until then, thanks for joining me in this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye for now.